You know, chances are uh, most of you know someone who has been diagnosed with breast cancer or you know someone who knows someone who's received the diagnosis. You've seen people run for the cure, you know the pink ribbon symbol, but how much do you actually know about the cancer itself and who it's most likely to affect? October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and joining us today with some really important insight is oncologist Dr. Jole Omore. We want to talk a little bit about the stats out there because I think it's important um, that people understand sort of the big picture. So it is estimated that in 2019, 26,900 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. 5,000 women will die from breast cancer. On average, 74 Canadian women will be diagnosed with breast cancer every day. This is something we need to be concerned about. It's something that we need to be looking at all the time. But the first thing I'm going to ask you about, doctor, is why is it important that we have Breast Cancer Awareness Month? I think it's important because, as you said in the stats, everyone knows someone who has breast cancer or even they themselves have had breast cancer. But oftentimes, people feel a lot of stigma and a lot of shame for having breast cancer. And the first thing when I first meet patients is that they're scared that they're going to die from this. Mm -hmm. But we have phenomenal treatment and we made so much headway, even in the last 20 years, five years, that 88% of women, so that's eight in 10 women diagnosed with breast cancer, will outlive their breast cancer. So I think it's important that the women get timely diagnosis, mm -hmm. and that's why breast cancer is important. There is hope. So you need to have the awareness so that you know to get the, to do like the examination on yourself and to go get checked out. So I wanna talk a little bit about um, breast exams and self-examinations. How often should we be going to get one done by a medical professional, and how often should we be doing them ourselves at home? So this is a tough question. Yeah. Um, oftentimes when patients come to me, some of them find it themselves. But yeah. right now, the science actually doesn't show that you doing a breast exam is going to change anything for you. Mm -hmm. What I tell women is that it's important that you know your body. But if for some reason you don't feel comfortable doing a breast exam, don't feel guilty about it. Okay. But if you want to do one, we, we can show you how you can do that. And in terms of going to your doctor, even that, the science doesn't support that you have to have one every time you go see your doctor. Okay. But if you notice that something feels different or something doesn't feel right with yourself, go to your doctor and get your breast exam. But what's more important is women over 50 need to be getting mammograms every two years. Okay. Every two years. So just incidentally, the two women, we're about to have two breast cancer survivors come and join us um, here on set. They both found it themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that we learn what we need to be looking for. And I know there's men in the audience as well. This applies to you as well. Men get breast cancer as well. So I'm gonna get everyone to stand up. We're gonna do a little, um, why don't you give us instruction on what yeah. we should be doing. Some people like to do it in the shower if you have a mirror in the shower. If not, you can do it anywhere you have a mirror. Yep. And what are we, what should we do? So first of all, with women, uh, you should do it about 10 days after the start of your period. Okay. And if you're gonna do it, you only have to do it once a month. And when you do it, uh, do it around the same time every month. So that way, the different changes that happen in your breast, you don't get scared off. Okay. Um, so when you do it, you stand in front of the mirror. Some people like to do it in the shower, which is good too if you have a mirror in there. You put your hand over your head. And so I always say to do it, you have to do it, uh, there's gonna go around twice. So view your breast as if it's a clock. Okay. So you start at Does the top. Does anybody remember what a clock looks like? <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Not a digital one. Um, so you start at 12 o'clock, yeah. whichever way you wanna go. I like to go this way. And yeah. you just start all the way around, first just going softly, just yeah. to see if you feel anything. And then you work your way all the way in as you get, and you go closer in until you get to your nipple. After okay. you don't feel anything, then you can go a little, now you go a little deeper and you do exactly the same thing. So you go around and around, and obviously right now you may or may not be wearing a bra, bless you if you're not, um, but at home you won't be, and so no. you'll be able to know like the denseness, like I've, I've been told I've got dense yeah. breast tissue, and so you know the bumps and the lumps that you're exactly. used to, so that if something feels out of place, you guys can have a seat, you are ready to go in there to your doctor and say exactly. something's weird, it feels, it doesn't feel right, right? Mm -hmm. I want to talk about who's most at risk of getting a breast cancer diagnosis. 
So when we talk about the risk of breast cancer, the majority of risk are things that are actually out of our control. Okay. Uh, breast cancer forms because breast cells are exposed to the sex hormones of estrogen and progesterone. Mm -hmm. As you get, as women get older, they're at an increased risk of breast cancer. The majority of the diagnosis of breast cancer is between the ages of 50 and 69. Okay. There are some people who have breast cancer in their family, so they have a sort of gene mutation that keeps getting passed on from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Those women are at a higher risk of breast cancer, but they only make up about 1% of the population. Okay. In terms of when we talk about um, gender, we've already talked that males also get breast cancer. Is there a percentage for them? So in terms of men, we say they make up less than 1% of breast cancer diagnosis. Okay. It's estimated in 2019 in Canada, about 230 men will get diagnosed with breast cancer. Okay. All right. Um, in terms of race, mm -hmm. there's really no... Uh, we haven't quite figured out if there's a racial disparity in terms of breast cancer. Yeah. What we do know is that women of um, African descent mm -hmm. tend to have a later presentation. Okay. And that's because there's just less exposure and the more fear of going to the physician. Oh, so it's not I that see. they're more prone to get breast cancer. Yeah. It's just in terms of when we talk about awareness, those are the communities, our vulnerable uh, communities are the ones that we don't, they don't seek medical attention. Right. They're not going to authorities for all sorts of different reasons, which we yeah. understand, but yeah, that's happening. I just want to mention recently Beyonce's dad, Matthew Knowles, revealed he had been diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, so we don't often think about men in connection to this disease, but we should because it can affect and it will affect about 230 men mm -hmm. in Canada this year. So choosing to have a mastectomy is not a light decision for most women, especially in a world that associates female identity with having a bust. Joining us today are two women who were faced with making that decision and who are sharing their journeys of surviving and thriving after battling this life-changing disease. Please welcome beautiful and brave Candace and Sarah. So you were diagnosed with stage two breast cancer about a year and a half ago. You were only 36 years old. That's correct. Um, so you want to advocate for some of the young women out there who might be thinking, ah, I'm too young for that. What would you like to say to them? Um, well, I found my cancer on a self-exam. Mm -hmm. um, I have a two-year-old daughter. She was two at the time. And she kind of pushed on my breast in a way that it kind of hurt. And when I was laying in bed the next morning, I felt the lump. And like you said, doctors have always told me, you're young, you have dense breasts. Mm. But I knew it was different. It was not movable. It was, it was a very different thing. So I think that when I called to book my um, mammogram that my physician had, had, booked, had booked for me, they said they wouldn't do it on me because I was under the age of 40 with no family history. Mm. But as soon as I entered the clinic and they put the ultrasound probe on my breast, the mammogram was done. Okay. And then I uh, proceeded to um, have the radiologist tell me that morning that she knew 99% that I had cancer and I had a biopsy rate that morning. Wow. Yeah. So, okay, so I had it all done in fast. one. Yeah. So when I advocate for young women, it's because there's really, we, we don't get screened until 40. Yeah. And through everything I've learned since getting cancer and through meeting so many people like Sarah, through social media, um, there are so many women under the age of 40 with breast cancer. You it's, have to advocate for yourself. It's staggering, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sarah, you were also very young when you were diagnosed, just 41. You've got a baby. Yes. You were in the fog of mummydom. Totally. You find out that you have cancer. Exactly. What are you thinking? What's happening? Well, I'm thinking, I have such small boobs, I can't possibly have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no way A cups can get cancer. A minus cups, actually. And um, I had just finished breastfeeding my son and which is okay. how I found it my boobs got up to be a full B guys it was so exciting and then they <laughs> shrunk down and that's when I could see it I was in the mirror I was on my first vacation away from my son I'm lifting up my arm like my mother-in-law she's there we love each other I'm like do you see this she goes yeah what the hell is that it was like all lumpy it was, in your armpit? It was right here on top of my boob oh. because my boobs were so small you know and I was like you know I was like what and, the, and you know how hotel lighting is so abrasive yeah thank God right because I'm like oh wow look at this so I'm walking around showing everybody you know what I mean really just do you see this? And they're like, yeah, we see it. It's bad. So I went to the doctor, and um, the second she touched it, she was like, okay, we're going to give you an, a mammogram, an ultrasound. 
get you in there right now. Absolutely. And even though I was 41, she was like, her face was just terrified. And by the oh. end of that day, I knew it was cancer. Uh, I, I didn't sleep at all. I was terrified. I f immediately, the first thing you think about when you have a young kid is, oh my God, I'm going to miss everything. So I'm making videos on my phone. Like, this is what mm -hmm. I look like when I wake up in the morning. Don't forget me. You freak out because mm -hmm. you don't want, I did all the work. I had a C-section for God's sake. I deserve to see this kid graduate from preschool, right. you know, or just whatever, or like see who, what loser he's going to end up going out with first. Anyway, the point is, is that <laughs> these are the kind of things you don't want to miss and you realize exactly what you don't want to miss. So Your that's what I was life. thinking. Is, you totally. know, laid out right in front of you. Yep. So, you know, having, um, figuring out where to go yep. from there, you know, mm -hmm. um, is a different choice for every woman. And um, you both chose different paths or similar paths. Let's start with you, Candace. What did you decide to do in terms of um, treatment, mastectomy? Um, and, and, and what went into making that decision? Okay, so the first step usually when you get diagnosed with breast cancer is that you see a breast surgeon. Yeah. I saw the surgeon and um, they were convinced it would be a lumpectomy and it was fine. But then because of my age, uh, I had a breast MRI that showed um, things that I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable with and I didn't want to go through more testing and I just wanted the cancer gone. Mm -hmm. So um, I decided to just have a unilateral mastectomy. So mm -hmm. I'm one booped and I can still conceal it and mm -hmm. I live my life like this and I buy clothes and sometimes you can tell, but like right now I only have one boob and right? Yeah, it looks, looks, awesome. good. <laughs> looks good. I have to say the second I found out I had cancer, I was like, I want them off. I was like, I went to the surgeon just like Candace did, and I said to them, could you just cut them off right now? Yeah. I hated them so much. I was angry at them. I was angry at my body for betraying me. I mean, I ate like vegetables and stuff, you guys, like matcha, mm. hello, and I ended up getting breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So I decided a double mastectomy right out of the gate. I wanted them to be really big. My doctor said that's not going to happen. Um, so he just gave me like, you know, like normal boobs, but um, yeah. Well, I want to talk a little bit about femininity and the bosom because they're tied together constantly. We see it in the media. We see it all over the place. When you look at yourself in the mirror now, has, has any of that changed for you? No, I love my body. Beautiful. That's I, I, beautiful. I, I, That's the word of that. statement in this world right now as it, a woman that has anything different than what you might see in absolutely. mass media saying she loves herself. It's and, a radical statement and um, we need to hear it. Yeah, and people think that you're young, you're going to regret not having reconstruction. But I had no interest in prosthetic breasts before I got breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So I, I had no interest in fake boobs after cancer. Mm -hmm. So I stay flat and... Um, I have one, mm -hmm. and I, I, I look in the mirror, and I'm like, yeah. You're good. I'm all right. This good. looks all right. I'm okay with this. Good stuff. <laughs> Listen, I, if anyone takes any of the takeaway um, from this segment, it's, uh, it's check yourself. Check yourself and make sure you go in for the appointments when you're supposed to go in and, uh, and see these amazing, shining examples of life uh, as a survivor, and we're so happy that you're on this side of the diagnosis. Thank so you. we're so happy you made it. Thank you, Doc.